Have you guys ever met someone that just seemed to have everything worked out in life that sometimes people are just, you know, lucky? You know, like that girl in Deadpool 2, you know, just whose superpower is just luck. But what happens when that luck runs out? This is the story of the Witch Elm. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Sorry for the weird intro. I just thought it felt interesting. So today we are discussing The Witch Elm by Tanner French. It's part of my submission for Two Book Nerds Talking Challenge for January for murder mystery combined with romance. Is it a murder mystery? Big yes. Does it have romance? Well, it has a little sprinkled here and there and something else. I believe this is my first book from an Irish author, so I got the intro and the words like bollocks or the Irish version of the cover has the Irish spelling of which as W-Y-C-H or Egypt and managed to make me feel like an Egypt for not understanding but definitely broadened my horizon. So what is the witch about? We follow the POV of Toby whom after almost dying during a robbery in his house, he went to take care of his dying uncle Hugo in his ancestral home of Ivy House along with his girlfriend Melissa. But then the discovery of a human skeleton inside the witch elm tree in their garden turns their world upside down as he realized his loved ones might be a suspect and because of that he started to reevaluate his life. Now I'll be talking this book as a whole so Spoiler alert, nothing major yet, but I'll warn you once we get into the whodunit. This book is actually part murder mystery, part family drama, part tragedy, part uh, coming of age. Uh, but instead of going for a more optimistic route, it went south. After I finished this book, I googled some stuff about the witch elm and its significance to the story. Apparently, there was a very real case in England where a skeletonized remains of a woman was found inside the witch elm by four children who was looking for a bird's nest. The murder was estimated to have occurred in 1941 and the remains are still unidentified and the case remains unsolved. Apparently, in Celtic, Celtic mythology, the elm trees are associated with passage to the underworld and apparently good for making coffins. Orbit. The book opens with Toby's narration as we flashback into how he get into this situation. It all started when he was just hanging out with his guy friends and we get the idea of what kind of person Toby is. The intro honestly for me took a little bit too long and I almost like zone out but since i read the synopsis i was like when are we going to get the skeleton part the story is more of a character exploration than a murder mystery i hate toby as a protagonist but he fits the whole theme of the story so well toby's life is great he has great job great friends awesome girlfriend what could possibly go wrong with his life answer everything so after he returns from this really long written party drunken phone call to his girlfriend toby was robbed in his apartment and he was left with a brain injury that affects his memory his speech and his perception and also his leg oh so yeah if you can tell that this incident is actually trying to put a seed of doubt a red herring in our murder mystery with our pov character having a effed up brain and all, so it already makes him an unreliable narrator. Although if you ask me, all first person POV is an unreliable narrator, regardless of their psychological state. Uh, we get to know his family, especially his cousins Leon and Susanna. Remember these two? They're very important. Leon is a tour guide whom Toby described as overly dramatic and annoying, while Susanna is described as intelligent, yet overly cautious to the point of insufferable. Then they brought up the discussion on whom the house will belong to once Hugo's dead and they decided that they wish it would go to the person who would hold on to that house. But then suddenly, as they were about to like just talk about the inheritance and everything, Susanna's kids found the skeleton in the tree. This is when the story transformed from a family drama into a murder mystery. So before I read uh, The Witch Elm, I read Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. And that was 
definitely a full-on murder mystery. There's nothing sweet, there's nothing light about it. When I was reading this, I was still pretty much in a very dark mood. I was a bit iffy about which elm um, at first. I mean, because it took about a hundred plus page to get to the mystery, to the beginning of the mystery, and I was a bit mad that it took that long. But at the same time, I also understand that Tana French was just trying to nail the exploration of a flawed perspective and it makes the mystery a bit jarring and uncomfortable. Camille from Sharp Objects was someone with a dark past, bad childhood, depression, and mental issues. And so we were immediately in this mindset bracing ourselves for the hit of gloom and doom. Whereas if you read the beginning of The Witch Elm, it's like it's trying to lull you into the sense of false security because everything just feels so so normal. Which is the reason why, because Toby was just a guy trying to live his life. Basically normal. That is until we get to the ending. After the authorities get involved, things finally gets really interesting. Led by Detective Rafferty, he's important too, remember him. So the body belonged to Dominic Ganley, one of Toby's uh, schoolmates, and everyone thought that he committed suicide after graduation, but his body was never found, and they suspected murder because of the way the body was found. But the question is, who did it? Now, Toby, Susanna, and Leon went to the same school as Dominic. The three of them also hang out with Hugo at Ivy House a lot during their school years. But here's the thing, they all have different experiences with Dominic as a person. Toby described Dominic as being this popular guy, and it's just a simple outgoing guy. Sometimes he makes fun of people, but he's not really a bully, and he was a quote-unquote good guy. But as I told you previously, Toby's perspective is not to be trusted. Number one, not only because his memory is messed up, but also because he was at a place of privilege. Let me explain. Leon was the target for being gay. Toby himself know that Leon was the target of bullies. But remember, he considers Leon as a drama queen and loves over-exaggerating things. He's just like, you're not being bullied. <laughs> Obviously, because you're gay, you are overly dramatic. Because of the case, the whole garden has to be excavated for investigation. The destruction of the tree, the garden that used to be the playground of their childhood, it's like unearthing the secrets between Leon, Susanna, and Hugo, and Toby himself. And it's like gone at all of their innocence all the facade is gone, all the secrets are being uncovered one by one. What's even more sad is that it is said that they were going to replant the trees in the garden but nothing worked out as if like symbolically trying to say that no matter how they try to patch things up after this, something's just never gonna work. Anyway, as the investigation go on, Toby is led to doubt his own memory while desperately trying to grab onto any form of sanity that he has left. Uh, Melissa, who is also trying to become his anchor, is slipping away from him. Several evidence later, he begins to suspect himself. You know, he begins to suspect maybe he's the one that did it because during the time that uh, Dominic went missing, he was passed out drunk or high or something. Especially when Susanna told him that he wasn't in his room during the night Dominic disappeared. Oh. Oh, after he discovered that Dominic's reign of terror over Leon was a lot worse than he remembered, he realized that Leon had the best motive to murder Dominic and pin it on him, Toby, since Leon constantly making jabs on how easy Toby had his life, all about everything just simply worked out for him. Plus, one of the most important evidence in this case, Toby's camera just happens to be stolen during the robbery, which led to Toby suspecting that it was Leon that arranged the robbery. This led to Toby trying to do his own investigation and trying to lure Leon into confessing, but things get ugly really, really fast that it led to Melissa breaking up with him. Hashtag Melissa deserves better. And he gets even more erratic as he, he realized that there is no way out of this. He's this close to being sus being convicted of murder. This conflict led to Toby himself beginning to question his morality. How does he fit into this? Sure, like, I mean, he, no matter how many times he tried to replay his memories, sure, he was a bit naughty, but 
he was never a bully. A little prank, fake email, all harmless, and he never uses his popularity to oppress others. He had no bad blood with Dominic and has always been a good guy as far as he remembers. But then here comes the question, what makes a person good? The thing I hate about Toby is that how innocent he thinks he is just because he never he never murders or steals or do any major crimes he thinks that he is he never hurt anyone when literally everyone told him that Dominic was a bully a really big one and that Leon was experiencing the worst and that it happened all around him he never noticed. He was like, no way, man, you're just being dramatic. I mean, my memory's Jack, but not that Jack. And he didn't say it once. Uh, when someone told him a different version of his memory, the actual legit version, his cousins told him that Dominic is an ass. He called them overdramatic and overcautious. Dude, Dominic shoved a stick up Leon's butt. What do you think? Even his other friends also say the same things and he still brushed them up by saying that no, 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 you're wrong. Dominic was just a normal guy. He's not normal. He was a bully. He was a sadist. He was an abuser. Your brain's screwed, all right? Deal with it. Listen to others. You are the one with the flawed perspective. Just listen. But because remember what I mentioned, his perception is also jacked, so it was really hard for him to listen to others. Leon and Susanna always says that he seems to be able to talk his way out of every trouble. While Susanna is the wallflower nerd and Leon is the gay weirdo as, you know, as in plot. Except that being in a position of such privilege all his life, he forgot that not everyone has it easy. He keeps saying that school was never a cakewalk, but never acknowledges or even realized that some people had a really shitty time back in school. He has limited POV of his life and he sees nothing beyond him and his own experience. Is Toby a good person? In a way that he's never got trouble in school, never directly harms people. If you define that as good, then yes, he is a good person. However, we all know that it takes more than that to be a good person. It takes self-awareness, it takes consideration, and most importantly, it takes action. And Toby has none of those, all right? I hate Toby because he's the kind of person that if you're telling him you are experiencing labor pains, he's just gonna say that, oh, it's just like pooping. That if you told him your boss touches you inappropriately, he'll just call it jesting. That's the kind of response that Leon got when he told Toby about all the terrible things that Dominic did to him. Literally everyone at school knows what's going on and he's the one turning the blind eye because those things don't happen in front of him. And then, and then, when Leon was pouring his heart out, yelling out his frustrations over all the trauma that he's been through with suicidal thoughts, Toby had the balls to say, come on, man, it's been, what, 15 years? You should be over it by now. Best cousin ever. So at this point, a uh, big spoiler is coming, so brace yourself. This argument eventually led him to believe that he himself might be the killer. There's also the dilemma. Should he confess of his crimes or should he not? But then... Like I said, Toby is a very lucky man. Luck is again on his side when Hugo confessed of murdering Dominic. Sadly, Hugo died during the interrogation process and uh, the case is considered closed. So, rip Hugo. But after all that is said and done, here comes the real kicker. Now for me, this is where the murder mystery aspect falls a bit flat. Since our POV character is not, remember, he's not in the best of mental state, the mystery is unraveled not by proper investigation. The revelation happens by exposition storytelling. I would say that's lazy writing, but in this case, I'll allow it. 
uh, because Toby was having this immense guilt of having his crimes being taken on by poor old Hugo, Susanna finally told him the whole truth. Apparently, Dominic used to hit on her a lot, going through the territory of harassment and that she was very, very, very uncomfortable and reject him through and through. But Dominic seems to unable to take rejection and of course, like what Leon been through with the harassment, it kept getting worse. My hatred and annoyance toward Toby is also increased because he said he didn't know about Leon, but he might have tried to protect Susanna if he knew. So yeah, he basically didn't care about Leon, you know, even though Leon had it worse for such a long time. And just like with Leon, he brushed off Susanna's complaints about Dominic, saying that it's good that guys are paying attention to her and that him saying things to the boys would affect his social standing in the school, whatever. You're a freaking teenager. What social standing? Even your boxers are sponsored by your mom and dad. So stop talking about social standing when you can't even fly out of the country legally by yourself. Long story short, literally because Susanna took 20 plus pages to explain, uh, she and Leon ended up killing Dominic. It's a very intricate plan. I will give her that. I won't go into the detail, but it was definitely something for a teenager. You think this is over? Not yet. So sometime after the funeral, Detective Rafferty showed up. Turns out that Hugo knew all along about the body in the tree. He realized that the body in the tree needed not just a proper burial, but if the house is sold to someone else, it will create a bigger problem. Rafferty knows that it was either Susanna or Leon or both of them. But because all of the evidence pointed to Hugo, there was really, really not a lot of things that he can do. And from the beginning, Rafferty was just using him as a diversion. Also, as a backup plan. Because of his injury and the twitchy nature of quality that he had, it would be easy to convince the jury that that twitchy guy is, well, a killer. And no one would even believe him if he tried to plead an innocent. This is actually ironic considering that he used to not take Leon seriously for the bully simply because of the way Leon is. Of course, Rafferty was just saying that to push him to confess, saying that Leon and Susanna would have left him, you know, like left him hanging to deal with all the mess. Rafferty definitely made a mistake in saying that because he beat the crap out of Rafferty. Ended up killing him. Yes. And that's that's when he remembered the missing piece. Yes, there is another missing piece. Because he was wondering why all of a sudden Dominic wants to hit on Susanna and Susanna barely stands out from the crowd. And then he remembered because he was a teenager and teenagers make pranks all the time. Well, pranks in this case led to murder because remember what I said about Toby being naughty and make pranks about? Yeah, one of them being fake emails. I mentioned that earlier, right? Well, it turns out out of all the things that Toby forgot in his shitty memory, he also forgot that he was the one that pranked Dominic by sending fake emails that is allegedly from Susanna, driving Dominic crazy about Susanna and that it wasn't just one email, it was like multiple emails basically driving him crazy and just obsessing over Susanna. Toby's revelation really got me thinking. We always quick in pointing fingers towards others, but when was the last time we look inward in ourselves? He was the catalyst of everything. If he didn't send those emails to Dominic, Dominic wouldn't be obsessed with Susanna, Susanna wouldn't be harassed, Susanna wouldn't get stressed and plan to murder Dominic. This is why I hate Toby, but at the same time I cannot hate him because he is the right protagonist for this story. Fast forward, uh, he ended up going on trial and plead insanity and he was sent to a mental hospital. Ironically, the robbery ended up being a blessing in disguise. From the beginning of the story, he was cursing the crap out of the mis fortune that he woke up from it from all the pain and but that pain that very change in his life ended up to be the one saving him from being convicted as a murderer not his smooth talking charming self and another irony is that they all want to keep the ivy house both for nostalgic reasons and for well more morbid reason you know 
but they still ended up selling the house anyway to pay for his lawyer. And after being released, you know, he was he was actually doing good. Nowhere near as well as he did before the robbery, but better than he expected. He still got a stable job. It really wasn't easy for me to sympathize with him, even though he is a POV character. Considering he's also the one that started it all and had the audacity to forget and assume that he did nothing wrong, that he's very innocent. It's not because he lost his memory, it's because he thinks that he knows everything and it's his presumption is really pissing me off. But on some level, I can still understand him. Because of this incident, because of this revelation, he ended up losing a lot, like a whole lot, his job his girlfriend, his uncle, even though his friends are somewhat in touch with him, but it is different now and he knows that. He even started to doubt his family. I mean, like, can you blame him? I mean, at the, I sympathize with him with that. I hate Toby for his privileged life and his uh, self-righteousness and ignorance, but I totally understand. You know, when you realize you've been alone all along, but at that time you were just too ignorant to notice it. He didn't go to jail. Leon and Susanna lived their lives okay, but Toby came out of it a different person. Gone was the outgoing, charming man who could talk his way out of trouble. Gone was the cheerful, confident man he was because what was there wasn't confidence. It was self-absorbed. He got it easy in life, but that is still no excuse to consider himself better than others. At the end of the day, even in the worst situation, Toby has luck on his side, which is surprising why Tana French didn't put any motives from St. Patrick considering it's related to Celtic folklore. I guess it might be a little bit of a hat on a hat. To conclude, The Witch Elm is not just a murder mystery. It leans more towards family drama, but more importantly, a lesson how the smallest action can have the biggest magnitude. Toby's seemingly harmless prank and his ignorance of others' lives led to Dominic's murder. Well, despite me not liking Toby, I like the direction that the character goes. As a person, I genuinely hope that beyond the story, he would fully recover and learn to be his old self, but with a better sense of the world. Now, uh, I'm not defending murders, but look at it this way. In a lot of cases, a good support would have fixed everything. Because sometimes all you have to do is just sit down, focus, and listen to your loved ones and dispel all your judgmental thoughts. That's all for me on The Witch Elm by Tana French. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!